Hi, this is my model for my integumentary project. So this is going to be the epidermis, and the epidermis's primary function is to protect our body by keeping things that may uh, be harmful out and keeping the things that our body needs to function properly and contain it. The epidermis also contains melanocytes, and these cells contain a pigment called melanin and are responsible for the color in our skin. The melanin in the melanocytes are also responsible for protecting our skin from harmful UV rays. And as we move on to the dermis, its primary function is roles involving the nerve endings, sweat glands, sebaceous glands, hair follicles, and blood vessels. We're going to talk about the subcutaneous level and um, this level ultimately protects uh, our body with padding by using fat, as you can see, and the excess fat, and it cushions our, um, protects our bones, muscles, and organs, and any physical damage with the fat. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the hair follicle. This is going to be a hair, and this is the hair root. This red lining around it is going to be the hair follicle. And the hair follicle is a tunnel-shaped structure in the epidermis, the um, outer layer of the skin, as we talked about. And uh, hair starts growing at the very bottom of the hair follicle. And um, as more cells are created, the hair grows out of the skin and reaches the surface. What we're going to talk about is the erector pili muscle right here. And this is a tiny muscle that attaches to the base of the hair follicle. And um, so basically the main function is for our body to generate heat. Um, when we are cold, the erector pili it makes the hair stand up. So it traps um, heat in the outer layer of the skin. And then if we're cold... Um, I mean, if we're hot, then the hair layers are going to lay down with these muscles. Next thing we're going to talk about is the sebaceous glands, as you can see right here, these little pockets. And these sebaceous glands are associated with the hair follicles, and it is also located in the dermis. And the primary function is these sebaceous glands produce sebum and along the hair root and up to the skin surface in this little canal. Next thing we're going to talk about is sudoriferous glands, which is right here and better known as the sweat gland. And as you can see, the pore goes all the way up to the surface of the skin. And so the sudoriferous gland excretes two different types of um, skin glands. And that would be the eccrine gland, which is found all over the body and it produces like a watery kind of substance for um, and its primary function is to cool off our body and regulate our body temperature um, as it evaporates and then the second type of gland that it excretes is going to be the apocrine, apocrine sweat gland and this is mainly found in the armpits and the perianal area and um, as it is in the uh, in the area it reacts with bacteria and um, that's why it causes smell and it but it usually is odorless. The next thing we're going to talk about is Messner's corpuscle which is right here and its main primary function and uh, responsibility is touch and it consists of a cutaneous like nerve ending and it's responsible for transmitting the sensations of like, like very um, detailed fine uh, touch and vibration. Next thing we're going to discuss is Pisanian's corpuscle, which is right here. And it's a uh, oval kind of circle shape and it's rounded into like kind of like an onion with layers. And again, this is going to be just like the Messner's corpuscle and responsible for reaction, uh, sensing um, touch with nerve endings. And uh, but its primary function is actually to receive. Um, uh, feeling from sensing pressure and again just like the messengers it's also going to be responsible for vibrations. The next thing we're going to talk about is the ruffing 
terminals, which is right here. And this, their primary function is to respond to deep um, continuous pressure. It's deep in the dermis and also the hypodermis, which is just above the dermis. And um, it is also a mechanoreceptor like the previous ones we discussed. We can talk about crasses and bulbs, which is going to be this right here again. And the crass, crasses and bulb is a small encapsulated nerve ending that functions as a thermoreceptor, so usually responds to um, cold and touch and pressure. The next thing we're going to talk about is Merkel's disc right here, and this lies in the epidermal ep, epidermal dermal um, area, and this associates with sensory nerve endings and functions as touch. The thing we're going to discuss is the free nerve endings, which is this right here. And this is going to be the most abundant receptor, and it functions in very light pressure and also fine touch. The next thing is going to be veins, which is this blue line going to be running down through that. And the veins' uh, primary function is to move blood to the heart and it also trans the blood transports nutrients, oxygen, and water um, to cells to function properly in the integumentary system and throughout the body as well. We're going to talk about the artery which is this red fine line running through here and its main um, primary function is to move blood away from the heart but um, in the case of the integumentary system, uh, the arteries are also responsible for vasoconstriction um, by art arterioles, which are small arteries in the dermis layer, and this, um, provide this is the constriction of the artery to um, prevent less heat loss in the body. 